What is the best moment in One Piece? Is it Robin's desperate I wanna live? And does that moment rank above or below when Luffy absolutely destroyed this celestial dragon? Or could both of these moments even fall behind this island-shaking clash between Whitebeard and Roger? Let's find out as I take on the impossible challenge of ranking the 23 best moments in all of One Piece. Starting with a moment that literally saved Sanji's life, because in chapter 58, Sanji and his mentor Zeph were stranded on this deserted island here. And now at this time, the aspiring cook hated this old man because Zeph's crew basically killed Sanji's former crewmates. 70 days later, Sanji is starving and about to die, so he plans to steal Zeph's remaining food. However, he quickly learns that all Zeph has actually left is treasure, and then he is stunned when he sees this. This honestly quite gruesome scene makes Sanji cry like a little baby, and he realizes that Zeph has literally cut off and eaten his own leg just so Sanji could have more food to eat himself. And while this might seem like an unexpected moment to pick for this list, just wait until you see uh, which shocking moments I ranked inside my top three. However, a person eating himself for the sake of a little boy is really only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the Straw Hat's heartbreaking backstories. And this is absolutely true as well for Brooke's flashback, which, let me tell you, this moment absolutely ruined me. You might remember that his crew is literally dying from a deadly poison here, and the music loves loving crew joins together in one last tear-jerking encore. And as Brooke's crewmates drop one by one, I was literally bawling my eyes out because what a sad but also incredibly powerful moment. And honestly, that's really a strength of One Piece that it can make you feel both stuff like this, really pure sadness, but also absolute joy. And no scene captures the joy of the story as much, I think, as this epic panel right here. And that's because we've just witnessed the former Pirate King's epic journey to reach the end of the Grand Line. And as we are all on the edge of our seats, wondering if we will see what the One Piece treasure actually is, we only only get to see their legendary reaction to it, which is everybody laughs. And not just any laugh, like being sarcastic about it, no, a true feeling of absolute joy here, which only makes me even more curious, really, what this treasure really is. And if this moment is only at number 21, then just wait until you see what's coming up next, because here we have one of the most jaw-dropping moments in the entire story. Now, at this point, Luffy has battled his way through hundreds of enemies of Ennis Lobby as he tries to rescue Robin. And everything was going pretty smoothly, honestly, until he was stopped by this guy. And you have to remember that this government secret agent here was basically untouchable at this point in the story until Luffy revealed this. Wow, this absolutely blew my mind. I mean, for the first time in the story, Luffy showed an actual power-up and he immediately demolished the world government agent with his new supercharged speed and strength. And while Gear 2 was an incredibly hyped moment in Luffy's journey, perhaps no event was more important to him than the next one. And that's because all the way back in Chapter 1, Shanks gave Luffy his famous straw hat, which inspired him, of course, to become a great pirate. And it's a simple moment that I think a lot of us take for granted, but without it, Luffy literally may never have gotten as far as he has in the story in the first place. But of course, we absolutely cannot talk about inspiration without remembering this man's epic finale. Because in this climactic moment of Dr. Hirolok's life, I was completely torn up inside. Young Chopper here had mistakenly made a deadly soup which was eaten by his only friend in life. And I mean, how tragic is that? But instead of making Chopper feel guilty for basically killing him, Hirolok instead confronted the evil ruler of the island and delivered the most epic speech maybe in the entire story. And then, of course, he even did this. This. And uh, wow, even just uh, reliving it right now, it's, it's just heartbreaking in so many ways. I mean, for Chopper to lose the only person who really cared about him, and for myself to just see how far this man would actually go to care for his adoptive son. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'm not crying, it's just uh, a little 
water on the camera. However, that moment isn't even close, honestly, to the best moment that we'll discuss later on. But first, we have a scene that shows Luffy's incredible faith in his crew. I'm talking about when Sanji here abandoned the crew to go to Hulk Kick Island, and Luffy said, uh-uh, I'm not losing my favorite cook, and he chased him down and finally caught up to him on Whole Cake Island right here. Sanji, though, at this point genuinely thought that he was doing what was best for the crew and tried to trick Luffy into leaving by making him hate him, even going as far as to beat his captain like he was tenderizing a chunk of meat. Oh my god, like, this moment made me so mad that Sanji would go this far on the one hand, but also feel so sad for him because he felt like that was his only resort of getting Nami and Luffy away. I mean, yeah, Nami hit him again, but of course, even after getting this beating, Luffy saw right through his intentions and continued to believe in Sanji and eventually brought him back to the crew, which just goes to show just how much Luffy really loves and cares for them. And now, while this moment might have threatened to break the bonds of the Straw Hat crew, this next moment literally shook the world to its core. And that's because in Marineford, we experienced the heartbreaking loss of Luffy's brother here. And honestly, I never for a single moment actually believed that we would lose both Ace and the world's strongest man, Whitebeard, as well. But after tanking hundreds of bullets, cannonballs, sword attacks, and even having half of his face blown off like here in the manga, Whitebeard still stood tall and proclaimed that the One Piece is real. Now, this moment not only became one of the most iconic sentences in all of One Piece, but it made me really shiver with its epicness, and it reminded us that Luffy at this point still had a very, very long way to go to reach his goals. However, from this very epic but nonetheless sad scene, we now shift to what is maybe the greatest adrenaline rush in the entire story so far, because we're here in Saba Odi, Luffy's friend has just been shot by this world noble, and Luffy is pissed. He walks towards the Celestial Dragon, dodging bullets left and right without caring, and absolutely smashes this guy into the next dimension. And we, like, really hated this guy. So it was just so satisfying to see him being crushed like that. But now, before you go out and punch your most hated enemy, instead, why not smash that subscribe button instead for more One Piece content like this? And anyways, has your favorite moment shown up in the ranking yet? Because if not, it might just be up ahead, because this next moment and character is certainly one that I will never forget and might be a top contender for many of you. And that's because there is almost no character we fell in love with faster than Corazon here. Because after just a few chapters of absolutely despising him for kicking Law to loving him for taking care of the sick and dying young doctor. And again, the moment I just couldn't help but bawl my eyes out once again was when he let himself be killed just to give Law a chance to live. And he even stayed alive long enough fighting his his wounds to hide Law's heartbreaking cries. And uh, while this was one of the most impactful deaths in the entire story, it was not as incredible, I would say, as this moment right here. And that's because after Zoro was sliced up like a cucumber, he holds up his sword and shouts that he will never lose again, pledging his allegiance to Luffy. And at the same time, he doubles down on his loyalty and the crew. And man, I just love Zoro. But while this moment showed Zoro just how far he still has to go, this next moment showed Luffy that he was nowhere near strong enough to fulfill his dreams. And that's because in Marineford, after he had struggled and gone through so much to save his brother, they could almost taste freedom until this of course happened. And let me tell you, when I saw this for the very first time in the anime, it was like I had my own massive hole in my chest. I was genuinely shocked and in physical pain for this. And as Luffy was holding his dying brother in his arms, it literally broke his mind. And really, it broke me too. It just shows that the deeper the bonds of brotherhood, the more heartbreaking it is when those bonds are then broken. And what a fantastic unexpected moment in the story, which is exactly the same heartbreak I actually felt during this next moment. That's because when Luffy decided the crew needed a new ship, his best friend Usopp felt mad massively betrayed. You see, Usopp and the ship were so connected that it felt like Luffy was choosing to get rid of Usopp as well, and the argument got so heated that the two eventually had to square off in a duel. And really, this was just so hard to watch, like, and I mean, despite Usopp really pulling every trick that he has, I knew all along that he stood absolutely no chance of beating Luffy, and our favorite sniper temporarily left the crew, and gosh, this was tough, kind of like having to say goodbye to a favorite pet, I guess. 
us. Which admittedly is absolutely insane that this moment didn't make the top 10, but just wait until you see the legendary and actually surprising, I like to think, moments that are coming up at the end of this video. Kicking it off with one of the coolest scenes in the entire story. And honestly, I don't think there has ever been a scene that has better captured the themes of the story of One Piece better than this legendary moment right here. People's dreams never die. Which is true even in death. And there is one death in particular that impacted all of the Straw Hats more than any other. You know which one I'm talking about? Well, it's of course the funeral of the Going Merry. And boy did I never expect to cry over a ship in my life, but that's exactly what happened when the crew put their first vessel to rest. And it was truly a true friend and crewmate was lost that day, but of course never forgotten. And however, this moment I think was nowhere near still as shocking as this next one. And let me tell you that after all the death and destruction that took place on the back of this giant elephant, I never expected the animal minks were actually protecting this samurai all that time. But when they said Raizo is alive, I literally just had to sit and stare because my brain could not really process what I was witnessing here. I mean, dude, this cat and dog sacrificed a literal arm and a leg plus their whole country was almost wiped out and I truly thought that Ryzo was not here so this moment hit me like almost no other one in the entire story and like I know that friendship is kind of a meme in anime but there has never been a display of loyalty more powerful than this one I think I mean just <laughs> Actually, let me let me take that back because this next one here, now that I think about it, is actually also god tier levels of loyalty. And that's because this Sam right here survived an entire hour of torment in a ridiculously hot pot of boiling oil while literally carrying his entire crew on his back. I mean, how heavy on the symbolism do you want to go? And to top it all off, Odin died with a smile, showing us that this was truly a man who gave everything of himself to protect his friends, family, and country. And while we all knew that Odin's death was coming, I don't think anyone expected just how heroic this would turn out to be. What a true chat, but an even more unexpected twist came way earlier in the story in chapter 216, where VV made the shocking choice to not join the crew. And uh, oh, right, let me tell you, there has not been a single character in the entire story that the fanbase probably wanted more desperately to rejoin with the crew. Like people really love Vivi. I mean, she did travel with the Strahds for a really long time, but in the end, she left us kind of blue balled with this heartfelt speech and the legendary scene where they all show off their exes. Maybe for Nakama again, hopefully very soon. Oh, actually, also, let me show you something. I do think I made a, a short about this, but I actually have this uh, this really cool traditional Japanese ukiyo-e print of just that moment, which I'm really proud of. It's really cool. Just wanted to show that off quickly. On to the next moment. Because while Vivi chose to stay behind, when another character finally joined the crew, it made one of the most emotional moments in the story. And in my opinion, it is the first truly gut-punching scene in the entire story in the first place. You know what I'm talking about. Because for over 70 chapters, not was smart, strong-willed, and didn't let anyone boss her around, but that all changed during our long park. In chapter 81, Nami has just lost everything. Years of hard work to collect treasure to free her village had just been stolen in an instant, and she was powerless stopping the villagers to go and march towards Arlong Park, where they would surely be killed. And so honestly, when she finally broke down and cried out to Luffy for help, it made me want to suit up and go fight Arlong myself, honestly. Man, uh, going through all of these moments is kind of like a real roller coaster over here, but we still have the most impactful moments still to come. <laughs> because at number four is the moment that changed the entire final saga of the story. And come on, you know this was gonna be in the top five, because in chapter 1044 of the manga, we have the awakening of Gear 5 Luffy. And let me just say that this moment got my heart pounding like almost no other, and it did break the entire One Piece fanbase. Just like everyone else, I had waited for years for Luffy's Gear 5 transformation, but I could have never imagined that it would turn out like 
this and I love it. What a crazy twist with the devil fruit and it was perfectly on brand for Luffy and even though I have so many questions about this power, this moment combines some of the pre time skip wackiness with insanely cool new powers for a truly legendary and unforgettable moment in the story. Though even gear 5 did honestly not make me jump out of my seat like this next one and that's because I've never been more surprised at a single moment in One Piece than when Charlotte Katakuri decided to stab himself during his fight with Luffy. And yeah, you may be surprised that this moment is ranked so high here, but to me really, it was just so completely unexpected and such a cool, unique, pure moment that I will never forget the absolute mind-boggling shock of that moment when I first read it. Because after Luffy was tricked and nearly knocked out by Katakuri's sister, the mochi man who had made fun of Luffy the entire time could have easily finished the fight here, but instead he chose to even the playing field by literally stabbing a hole through his stomach at the same point. No other villain in the story has ever done that, and it is just one of the reasons that Katakuri and this moment is an absolute fan favorite, especially for me personally. And the number two most insanely impactful moment is likely many people's favorite scene. A moment of such excitement, relief, and pure desperation, which is when Robin finally told the crew, I want to live. And even though Robin betrayed the crew and nearly got them killed, they never gave up on her. They chased her across two islands, beat up some of the most powerful secret agents of the world government, and even declared war on the government itself to show her that nothing could stand in the way of saving her life. Which now, of course, you will know means that at number one, is the most legendary, epic, absolutely pure moment of insane greatness in the story, which is of course, nothing happens. And honestly, what more do I need to say? I mean, Zoro is just the peak of awesome and nothing surpasses this moment in the story for me, but this moment might also have been real foreshadowing for Zoro's ultimate power up later on in the story, because his unbreakable will is what led him to eventually unlock Conqueror's Haki during his fight with this this godlike figure right here and this was such a legendary moment that I of course had to include it in my ranking of the top Conqueror hockey moments in the story as well which you can watch right here. I'm sure it'll contain a lot of moments you've missed from this video on purpose and so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.